Okay, um, it probably won't take you too long to explore uh, the substitution method and find out that it does have its limits. No pun intended, okay? Um, this would be one of them. You know, what, what if we went ahead and just found, well, and just, you know, additionally, just think, you know, this, this is a, another example of, you know, the importance of the separation between, you know, f of 2 and the limit of x goes to do, okay? So if I found f of 2, you know, like I just did the substitution method, I would get, let's see here, that would be what, negative 14, maybe, if I did my arithmetic right, which isn't always the case. Um, well, I'm dividing by 0, aren't I? Okay? Um, so what is, what is the problem with that? We have two scenarios that result from this, okay? Um, the first one is that x, when x is equal to, let's just say that mark is 2, um, we might have an asymptote, okay? Because this is a rational function, and all your rational functions are in that form, 1 over x, okay? So um, it could be that we have a situation like this, where, when of course, you know, a limit wouldn't exist. But it's also possible, okay, that we might have just, you know, a line, okay, with a hole in it. It just happens that at 2, it's undefined there, okay? So what you'll probably want to do is just go ahead and factor this thing out, okay? So if I can keep it on the page and do this, this will be great. So let's just rewrite the limit because we haven't done any evaluation yet. Um, that's minus two. So I need I need the two numbers that multiply together give me ten, and they add and give me negative seven. So I'm thinking negative two and negative five. That gives me negative seven, and it gives me positive ten. Okay. So it looks like, well, as it turns out, I've got. I can just cancel these two out, right? Okay. So what is x? minus 5. Well, that's just a straight line, right? Uh, with, you know, with a, with a y-intercept. Okay, so um, our, our choice has somewhat been simplified now. Okay, so now we kind of narrowed this down. This is just basically a fancy way of writing a line, um, if you think about it. It just happens, though, that, you know, 2 is not into the domain of this function. Okay, um, so that that's that's probably something you want to think about um, when, you, when you factor something like this out and you know just remember that if you know this line is going to have a hole in it and you might want to actually I don't know try, try putting this if you have a graphing calculator um, type this function in and see what happens and maybe zoom in at x equals 2 and I, I, they should have a hole in it okay should, should put a little hole in it right there so now we can go and use the substitution method, okay? So what, what is this function uh, really doing, okay, at x equals 2? So if we look at our graph, you know, yeah, it's undefined there, but it's still approaching this value right here, this value f of 2, okay? Well, I don't have to rewrite the limit, do I? Duh. So that is just equal to negative 3. Okay, negative three. So f of two. I mean, so this is, you know, just um, it approaches negative three. Okay, so it approaches negative three, and that is a pretty good way to look at uh, that one right there. Okay, let's take another example. Um. These, these ones are pretty common. Okay, so let's see here. Right off the bat, if we put 16 in, uh, we get square root of 16, is f we get four minus four. Now that's not a problem. If the numerator is zero, it's not a problem as long as the denominator isn't zero. But as we can see, it is a problem, okay? So, um, 
Let's do some factor magic, okay? Um, this first one, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it factors, but I think this one, this is going to be our go-to guy, right? Because I can factor this. I can take, I just think to myself, you know, you know, what, 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 what do I multiply um, by that will give me? This number down here. Okay, so it, it turns out if I take if I take the FOIL method here, okay, you know I've got opposite signs. I have the same term except for opposite signs. Okay, um, so that means the middle term collapses. Um, I, you know, and then I get and I end up with a negative 16. Um, so we end up we end up back with one of these uh, situations again. Okay, so what is that worth? That is worth square root of x plus four, which is equal to. I put if I plug if I plug the sixteen in there, I get square root of sixteen is four plus four. Okay, so this this limit right here, okay, this this function approaches one eighth as x goes to sixteen. Okay, um, I think in the next video I'll do a couple more examples with uh, some algebra.